You know how everybody's talking about the third eye? It's like you have your two eyes, but then there's a third one in the middle. It's important and it's spiritual. Well, it's not there. I mean, physically, if you x-ray your forehead, you've got some bone. If you're lucky, you've got brains in there. But there's nothing physical. So the third eye must be something spiritual. Oh, I don't know if this is the same thing, but I do know that there is something very important that is going on between you and the divine right there. And that interaction lays the groundwork for which kinds of people inhabit the different axes of direction in the afterlife. And it also explains why for some angels, east is 30 degrees different than it is for others. And it has to do with what the focus of individual heavens are. But not only does heaven have a directional compass like this, but hell has one too. Except the layout is reversed and the focus is on opposite things. How seeing God works. Seeing God? I want to see God. How do you do that? Like this. It has to do with, you know what? This is heaven at 145. Angels see the Lord in one way, and the Lord sees angels in another. Asymmetrical interaction. Angels see the Lord with their eyes. Well, duh. Well, what does the Lord do? Well, the Lord sees angels through their foreheads. God looks through your forehead. The reason for this is that the forehead corresponds to love. And it is through love that the Lord flows into their volition and makes himself visible to their minds to which the eyes correspond. The eyes are like the outer version of the mind. You know how you talk about, I see when you understand. Like Just like your eyes let you take in the physical surroundings. Your mind lets you take in the mental or conceptual surroundings. So while we can, in the afterlife, you can look out there and say, there's God. We talked before about how God appears as a sun or appears as a moon or can appear as a person in front of you. But God is going straight for the mind. That God flows into the mind of each individual angel and settles into their particular good qualities, the stuff in them, in their will, that's receptive of God, and then is present there and is like, part of how we then see the world. So God's presence in what in what angels care about determines the way that they, they look at everything, including how they see God. Swedenborg goes on, we can see from this what the Lord's presence is like in the heavens. It is everywhere with every individual in the good and true qualities that emanate from the Lord. Because the Lord's got into you and is with you looking out at everything you see. So he is in angels in what is actually his own. Their sense of the Lord's presence is in their deeper reaches. I was once inter on this channel, I was interviewing somebody who had had a near-death experience. I said, what, what was it like being there? And one thing they said is, you can feel that God loves you. You can feel it tangibly. God loves you. You can feel God right in there with you. It is from these that their eyes see. So he seems to be outside them because there is a continuum. This enables us to see how we should understand the Lord's being in them and their being in the Lord according to the Lord's words, abide in me and I in you. That means I'm going to live inside you and, and you're going to be able to see me out there, but it's only with me in you that we can even, it's like kind of, it's kind of not really how it is that God's outside you. You perceive him as outside you, but really he comes in, comes in through the forehead. In a recent episode, we talked about how angels in the innermost heaven see God and that you can see God out there because of this process, either as a sun in the, the deepest heaven or in the middle heaven as a moon. And in Heaven and Hell 146, Swedenborg makes this interesting declaration about that spiritual sun and moon. He says, the distance between the sun and the moon is 30 degrees. What? Why mention this? Well, it relates to how the cardinal directions work in the spiritual world and the difference between the heavens and how those heavens use 
God flowing into them to see God and to orient their life. So last episode, we looked at how the cardinal directions in the spiritual world work. The east is actually up, and east is where God is, and the other directions all relate to that. Getting back to that 30 degrees thing, we're going to finish that sentence that we quoted earlier. It says, the distance between the sun and the moon is 30 degrees, and the same alignment therefore holds true for the directions. The directions in the two kingdoms are 30 degrees degrees apart. So Swedenborg explains that, first of all, heaven is divided into two kingdoms. He says that there are angels in what he calls the heavenly kingdom that are heavenly angels, and there are angels in the spiritual kingdom that are called spiritual angels. All right, everybody. All right, settle down. God looks like the sun in the heavenly kingdom. God looks like the moon in the spiritual kingdom. So as we learned, the moon is 30 degrees away from here. God as this sun and moon is what dictates what all the other directions uh, line up to. So you have angels, heavenly angels that are all oriented on this axis here. But in the spiritual heaven, where you have angels of all kinds in all different places, the directions are 30 degrees different. So if a spiritual angel is facing the Lord in the east, they're actually facing 30 degrees differently than a heavenly angel facing the Lord. This is because everybody has a unique relationship with God and their home location in heaven, where you end up in heaven is is dictated by your individual relationship with God, your direction of approach to God. Swedenborg goes on in Heaven and Hell 148, all the people in the heavens live in different areas according to the cardinal directions. People who are sensitive to the good that love does live along the east-west axis. So, in general, we'll go back to our standard directions here. East-west has to do with love. Heavenly angels are oriented to love. So the more love you have, the farther east you want to live. The more love you let in, the farther east you want to live. If you can tolerate a little bit less, You want it, you're most comfortable in the climate farther west. People who are sensitive to issues of wisdom that result from the good live along the north-south axis. And actually south is where the most spiritual light is. So if you are deeply open to wisdom, you want to live toward the south. And if you're just opening a bit, you're more comfortable in the north. Just like we have certain interests and passions that we do want to delve more deeply into and other stuff that I'm not really into that. I'm happy to leave that up to other people. Angels all settle in the place that feels the most like who they are. This, this is my home. This is where I enjoy being. And they're fun. Everyone else goes to their places where they love being and everyone's cool with that. They, they get everyone is where they need to be. So anywhere in the spiritual world, angels will settle in their most comfortable location. Not only though, in the heavens overall. But let's say that in general, these yellow angels are more love oriented. If we just zoomed in on the heavenly heaven, where it's just those yellow angels, some of them within that heaven are gonna be more love oriented in the east. Maybe they're more truth oriented. Maybe they have a little bit less of truth. Maybe they have a little bit less of love. There's that same dividing even within a heaven. But, That goes down, we're talking microcosms within microcosms, baby. Because if you went into a particular community, let's say there was a community in the heavenly heaven that was all on the south side of that heaven, even within that community, if this suddenly scales to be just a map of that community, you're gonna have some people who live in the west of that community, who live in the north, who live in the east of that community. But even beyond that, let's say in the north side of this community, in the heavenly heaven, you had a group of people who were getting together for a party. They're just getting together or just a discussion forum of some kind. And we zoomed in on that and this thing scaled to be that. Even within that room, you'd have people, some people sitting on the south side of the room, some people sitting on the east side of the room, some people sitting on the west side of the room, because even there, 
the different places of comfort and reception stand. So everybody always has a place where they feel most comfortable. The directions are always pulling you toward, hey, this is exactly where you want to be. And speaking of people being allowed to go where they're comfortable, there are spiritual directions in hell too. Heaven has directions. So you, you can map heaven out with these different directions, but the directions are based on the priorities in the hearts and the minds of the people who are living there. East is up because it's where everyone looks to, and that's looking to the love that comes from God. You have 30 degrees over there, the truth of faith that comes from God. That's what they orient their lives around, so everyone is facing in those directions. Evil is just goodness upside down or backwards with the priorities flipped. So hell's got its own directions, but they are the opposite of heaven's directions. Instead of having love of God and love of the neighbor at the top, they face away. Their east is directly opposite, and the things of love and the things of truth are the last thing that they think about. That is at their back. So for, for hell, it's love of self-dominion. It's love of your own glory and, and power and everything. That's what you're looking toward. That's what I like. That's what gives me pleasure. That's what I'm into. And the love of falsity follows from that. So these are the things that are dominating the minds of people in hell. And that is represented by how things manifest in hell. The people in hell do not focus on the Lord as the sun or the moon, but look away from the Lord toward that dark object that occupies the place of our world's sun and the gloomy object that occupies the place of Earth's moon. This is a weird wrinkle that we already talked about, but for some reason there's a representation still in the minds of spirits in the afterlife that cling to materialism and self-centeredness where there's something that's the opposite of God that is this dark, lifeless sun and something that is the opposite of God's truth, which is this murky, lifeless moon. And that is what they orient their directions around. That's what their life revolves around are these two dead, weird things. Hell's inhabitants have directions opposite to those of heaven. Their east is where they see that dark or gloomy object, and their west is where heaven's sun is. Their south is to their right, and their north to their left, no matter which way they turn their bodies. Nothing else is possible for them, because the whole tendency of their deeper natures, their whole orientation, therefore, aims and strives in this direction. So hell is just this, I'm, I'm selfish. I'm selfish. Everything I do is toward this weird obsession with myself. So no matter what, where you focus and what you're doing, that's what you're moving towards. There are differences, though, in the kind of life you can live in hell. People are obsessed with different forms of evil and falsity. People who are more obsessed with self-centered love of themselves live along the east-west axis in hell. People who are deeply into it, closer to the east. People who maybe have a little more of love and truth in them are up at the west. People who are more obsessed with falsity than with evil, with the false ideas that you have to have to justify an evil life, the things that go hand in hand with that. Like, hey, I'm going to be terrible to these people. Well, there's some reason why those people aren't really people in the first place or, or why it's okay for me. I'm justified in doing this. The more obsessed you are with falsity, the farther you go toward the south, the more, the less obsessed, maybe you have a little bit more of the light of truth in your mind, or you're not as bought in, you live more toward the north. But God is still there. He didn't disappear. And he's still always giving people who are orienting themselves in this direction the option, option to turn back toward the heavenly direction. Swedenborg says in Heaven and Hell 153, evil spirits sometimes seem to be oriented to heaven's directions, at which time they have intelligence and a grasp of what is true, but no affection for what is good. So as soon as they turn back toward their own directions, they are without intelligence or any grasp of what is true. They then say that the true things they had heard and understood are not true, but false, and even want false things to be true. So the mind can still turn 
the 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 heart is what makes you really living the life that you're living. The mind, you can have an evil spirit who's deep into the life that is hell with their will. Like their will is dead set on evil. But you can have a situation where their mind gets oriented back. God is able to pull their mind back so that they can see and understand and even for a time believe truth. Like that that, that door is always open. But ultimately if you're if if evil gives you joy and it's it's giving you these dopamine hits of like I I like doing this stuff it will always pull you back you, you your mind can't force your heart your heart has to lead if you want to try to make a change this can cause a real problem when the two opposite orientations run into each other and clash and this does happen in the world of spirits which is this place it's halfway between heaven and hell. So it's not oriented toward heaven. It's not oriented toward hell. It's where people of both orientations can, for a time after you die, live. And this, listen to this description of, of when, when that does happen. When an evil spirit comes into the company of good ones, it usually results in such a confusion of directions that the good spirits hardly know where their east is. This is an event that I've often noticed and I've heard about it from spirits who complained about it. It's like, ah, you're gonna have good spirits coming in, but if this, if, if everyone around them is operating on hell's compass, they they get totally disoriented. They, what What's going on? Like, where's God? Where's the truth? Actually, it's funny, you'd think maybe like, it'd be the opposite way, but no, that, that this mindset, the hell mindset is so toxic to the, to the mindset of goodness and truth. That's really why there has to be heaven and hell because the two different ways of being can't get along. They're de hell is destructive to the happiness of heaven and heaven is destructive, not intentionally, but it disrupts the happiness of hell. If you are living a life full of the joy of revenge and being a bully, you're not gonna like feeling love or, or feeling compassion or, or understanding the humanity of other people. That's going to destroy your, your happiness. So God is setting it up so that everybody can go to where their heart leads them and, and, and makes it so that, you know, we don't mess each other up in our own pursuits. God is always opening that door, trying to pull people back in the direction of love and truth. It's up to us, though, uh, you know, where we follow the, the different kinds of poles we get inside us. So we got all this information about how the directions work and heaven and hell and love and truth and the sun and the moon and the dark sun and the dark moon. What's it mean for us today in our daily lives? Well, this is a great quote that tells us exactly that. This is Heaven and Hell 153. It is provided by the Lord that everyone may have the ability to see and acknowledge what is true, but that no one will accept it except people who are focused on what is good, since the good, never the evil, is what accepts truths. Further, it is similar with us, so that we can be corrected by means of truths, though the extent to which we are corrected depends on our focus on what is good. So the direction that you're facing spiritually dictates how you're going to think, how much learning you can do, and how much spiritual growth you can have. This is why we can be turned toward the Lord in much the same way. However, if we are engaged in evil in the conduct of our lives, we immediately turn back again and justify within ourselves the false rationalizations of our evil over against the truths that we have understood and seen. The thing we got to work on is what, what direction are you facing? What direction are you facing? And what direction you're facing spiritually depends on what's your attitude toward good and evil. What, what is you? Is love important? God is love. God is love for the whole human race. Is that important? Does that matter? And then from that, do we want to know the truth? If so, that means you're focused, you're turning toward the east, and the learning will come with that. That's the most important thing. So we can, right now, even though our lives on earth don't necessarily feel that angelic all the time, you can have your directions down just like an angel would. And you can be feeling that, you can be making those turns today. <laughs>